All right, so let's talk about why seeds are super awesome, because they are. Um, one thing is that they are going to form in um, within the cone or within the flower. And then they're going to create <clears throat> what's called a seed coat, which is going to protect them so they can go dormant. Um, so as far as like why I'm like going crazy about seeds, um, there's a couple of reasons. One is that they can go dormant. So if it's too cold or if it's too dry, they can go dormant until it gets better. Um, they also are going to give a lot of protection to a plant when it's first starting to grow. So it's going to first start to grow <clears throat> inside that seed and then it's going to come out. Um, another reason we like to eat seeds is because they have stored food for the plant. And so what's going to happen is they're actually going to provide food for the plant until it gets to the surface of the soil and then it can do photosynthesis. So from that point where you buried it till the point where it breaks the ground, it needs food because it can't do photosynthesis. So that's another awesome thing about seeds. And then some seeds are going to help disperse the plant. And so they always are trying to get into new locations, so that's going to help them to do that. Now, some seeds actually can have um, adaptations to help them to germinate in otherwise unfavorable conditions. That should say unfavorable. Um, <clears throat> so one thing that they can do is they can be inside of a cone that will not open until it's been exposed to fire. Now, if you think about it, growing right after a fire is awesome. There's no competition and there's tons of nutrients, right? So that's a cool thing that they can do. Um, another one is some of them will only germinate, and germinating is when they start to grow, um, when they actually are around enough water. And what's going to happen is when the water hits their seed coat, they're actually going to reach, uh, leach out um, harmful chemicals that will kill all the plants around them. So that's twofold, right? The chemicals going to kill the plants around them for competition's sake. And also they're ensuring that they have enough water to make that happen so that they can grow. Um, and then the third one, some seeds can only go um, germinate after they've gone through the digestive tract of an animal. So what's going to happen is that low pH is going to break down the seed coat and then they're going to get dumped out in a huge pile of fertilizer and in a new location. So that's pretty awesome too. Okay, so um, now we're going to get into different types of fruits. So there's a lot of different um, types of fruits and I think I've got good pictures of these if I remember. Um, all right, so the first one is called a follicle, and the follicle is going to open up like a book. So this is milkweed that you see here, but what's important is that one side stays attached. Now that's going to be different from a legume. A legume is going to be where they actually can come apart. So they're in two pieces and they come apart, like a peanut or something like that, right? Um, the next one is going to be a capsule, and so this is a poppy capsule, and so that's actually going to have tons of little seeds inside of it, and eventually that'll open. Then you've got Samaras, which a lot of people call helicopters, and so those are going to use wind for dispersal, right? Um, then you have a droop. A droop is going to have a big fleshy fruit, and then there's going to be a hard pit inside, and inside that is going to be the seed. Then you have papos, which are going to be like watermelon, squash, those types of things, where they have a harder rind, and then they're going to have soft fruit inside with lots of um, seeds. And then true berries. True berries are going to have a thin skin and then lots of seeds on the inside. Hesperidia are going to be your citrus family. So if you think about what characterizes that, they're going to have that tough leathery skin on the outside and then um, a bunch of seeds on the inside. Aggregate fruit is going to be like what you see here. And you can see there are, um, it's going to be a whole bunch of um, fruits growing together. And that could be from multiple ovaries. Then you've got a multiple fruit, and that's going to be a whole cluster of flowers that are growing together. So that's how a pineapple gets formed. And then a palm is going to have a hard core, and inside is going to be the seeds, and then it's all surrounded by the fruit. And this last part is just talking about different ways that seeds can be dispersed. So one um, way, like a coconut, is going to be water dispersal, right? It's going to float to new locations, and that's how deserted islands are actually going to be formed. Um, and so what happens is once they hit the sand, they actually start growing roots and then they can grow. Um, mangroves are going to use them as well. Mangroves are awesome because they actually are going to form islands. So what happens is that floating little part I just showed you grows these roots coming down. And um, then that starts to trap sand. And that's how you get islands to form sometimes, which is kind of neat. That's what they look like grown up. And what's also cool is these are actually really important nursery grounds for fish. So when they're still tiny and they can't protect themselves, they can hide in the roots. All right.
So back to the notes, just make sure we went through everything. A um, couple that we didn't talk about is um, how another way that animals can help us with dispersal is they can eat and distribute them, but they can also bury them, right? If you think about squirrels and stuff, they'll dig a hole and put them in there and say, I'll be back for this later. And a lot of times they forget, and so that helps. And then the other one we didn't talk about are hitchhikers. So those are going to be the ones that actually like stick to your jacket and stick in your hair and stuff like that. So that's going to be why seeds are awesome.